Hello, everyone. Please welcome George, the co-founder of Yearmost, to the stage. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Introduction to Cosmos Development with Python. I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Um, so what what am I gonna, I'm going to talk about today a um, framework that uh, has been built out by a company called Fetch AI. They've built out this amazing thing called Cosm PY. Um, and it um, is sort of, it is an interface basically that sort of abstracts away a lot of the nitty gritty that's kind of required for you to be able to talk to um, all of these Cosmos SDK networks. Um, so if we talk, if we take a look at their, um, their stuff, right? We have very basic Python-y um, uh, things that you can do, right? Install it. They have a GitHub repo that we'll take a look at in a moment and um, whatnot, right? And we have their GitHub here. You guys can take a closer look. Um, very straightforward to use. You just need sort of a... Um, a seed phrase that you can create with any 12 or 24 word thing, right? Um, and then moving on to kind of um, looking at some of the stuff. We, every time that you want to kind of create a connection, you're going to create a profile to connect to that network and whatnot, and, and then talk to the network and do various things. But let's take a step back and take a look at sort of the differences that we have between what you might be used to in the Ethan Solana world versus what you might expect here in the Cosmos world. With Solana and ETH, you expect everything to be on one sort of one chain, right? Every app, every smart contract, every everything is running on one stack, right? And you kind of only have to worry about talking to sort of one, uh, one RPC gives you access to everything, right? Um, in, the, in the Cosmos world, it's, it's a little bit different you actually need to have sort of um, a library, not a library, but just like a list of, of different networks that you wanted to talk to, like these um, network configs that, that I just showed you guys. You'll need to have one for every single network that you want to sort of interact with. And there's a uh, Cosmos directory that's been created, and this has, uh, I think, something like 50-some networks that you can talk to, right? And if we look at the sort of the, the probably the most well-known one, uh, Cosmos Hub, which is where Adam Adam runs on, the page gives you some basic information, sort of a high-level overview. But the coolest part is it sort of tells you also um, what the wall of the derivative, derivative path needs to be, and um, sort of what the token, the native token is, and what its exponent is. That's that's always helpful to know. But most importantly. In my opinion, you also have uh, sort of public endpoints that uh, you can talk to and, and do whatnot. For for the config that we were talking about here, um, the defaults are usually gRPC, but it also supports uh, supports other protocols that you can you can check out. Um, so if we will just uh, jump right into some code. Um, just reshare. Um, stop sharing that. So reshare my screen. Where is it? Should we go? So here you can sort of see um, very basic, basic demo that I've written. For this presentation, you've got your uh, sort of usual imports. Um, these three are sort of the, the minimums that you're going to need for, for what we're doing today. Um, the network config import as well. And then here's that network config that we saw. As you can see, I'm using a endpoint that I found directly from the Cosmos directory. You have uh, some other settings and whatnot. And then we initialize the I don't know why they call that a ledger client because it's not related to ledger in any way, but you initialize the, the actual client that's going to be sending the messages, the transactions for you. And then we can actually do um, a quick demo and you'll see that um, 
this is um, showing me my balance right now, right? So I don't actually have 1.1 million atom. The um, the denoms that we were talking about, the exponents, you actually need to divide by six. So this wallet has about 11 atom. And then uh, we can move on. And that's that's basically how you query a balance and whatnot for, for an address. Um, and then you need to create um, a C phrase and whatnot that once you have it, you can create the private key and whatnot and move on to sending uh, sending some coins. And we will just let that continue. And it takes about five or 10 seconds to confirm. There we go. And then we can take take that hash and move it into a block explorer. Oh, I should share uh, share this other screen. And you can see that the transaction went through 26 seconds ago. I sent myself a tiny amount of Atom and everything went through. And that's, um, that's solar sort of uh, introduction to, very basic introduction to, you know, Cosmos uh, development with Python. Um, I guess I think this would be probably a good time to start any questions, you know, start the Q&A. And do you guys have any questions for me? Awesome. Thank you so much, George, for your presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can use the Discord, uh, what is it, track one introduction channel to direct your questions. And uh, yeah. Looks like someone's uh, typing something. Let's give them a couple. Are there any examples available somewhere like in GitHub? Uh, I can paste, um, I can paste these links for you. Um, on the GitHub page, um, the docs and the GitHub page, you'll find, um, I'll uh, share my screen again. So in the GitHub, there's a couple ex a couple examples as well. But more importantly, uh, on their docs page, they have a bunch of examples on how to use all this. They also have a Discord um, that that you could probably go to and get support if you need need to figure out how to do do some of this stuff. But they have they do have uh, a bunch of examples on on how to do. Uh, a number of stuff. I guess the other, the one thing that I probably forgot to uh, mention is once you sort of get into uh, get into the nitty, nitty gritty and want to work with um, a network that has um, non standard uh, Cosmos SDK modules, um, you'll have to actually download, compile, and compile the protobufs and then import them into your project. What I mean by that is um, uh, Cosm PY comes with sort of the default um, default modules that the Cosmos SDK um, will um, will give you, right? So if you look at if you look at these guys, 
um, Cosm PY will give you access into all of these modules. You'll be able to query them. You'll be able to interact with them. You'll be able to transact, uh, that transmit transactions uh, that have uh, the protobufs for all of these different messages, right? But if like you're going for something like uh, osmosis, let's say you want to uh, interact with uh, the osmosis um, custom stuff, right? Like their um, their uh, if you want to do a trade, let's say you want to do a, a trade programmatically, you're actually going to need to download and compile and then import the GAM protobufs, and they're available. There's a um, there's a couple libraries out there that allow you to do that, but um, yeah, that's that. Any other questions? Ministry experience uh, in Python is required to work with Cosmos. Um, I would I would say that like if you if you don't have uh, Python experience, um, the road the road is going to be a little bit harder because you're going to have to learn about Python. You're not going to have to learn about like Cosm PY, and you're going to have to learn with you're going to have to learn about uh, Cosmos SDK how it works, right? So I think um, not I'm not 100 sure how to how to answer that question because uh, I think learning Python is probably the easiest of those three things. So I would say that like just give it a shot um, and like. A lot of a lot of things. It's it's kind of hard to 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 screw screw things up because you're if you send coins to yourself, you're sending coins to yourself, right? Like it's not um, it's not the hardest thing in the world, and I don't think I don't think you need a ton of Python experience, but you obviously need to know how to run an ID or how to do an import, how to you know work with like you know seed phrases and whatnot. So it's not not too bad. Um, any, any other questions? Well, I don't see, I don't see anybody else. Oh, someone else. Oh. Uh, Cosm PY is maintained by the Fetch Fetch AI folks over at the at the network. Um, is it growing? Hmm, great question. Um, there's uh, 23 forks and it's been starred 49 times. I don't know. I don't know what the stats are over time, but um, since I've been I've been using using it, um, they have uh, released. Uh, a bunch of versions. Um, I think I think since April they've they've released they've uh, went from version 0.4 to version 0.6. So they they're continuing to to add on features. They're continuing to add on support for other things, and and it is it is being actively developed. I don't think it's a finished product, um, but um, I do believe it is growing. And there is a Chasm PY Discord. It's uh, the Fetch AI guys. Let me see if I can get you guys an invite. Um, I don't think it's not letting me create an invite, unfortunately. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Here we go. So there's the uh, Fetch AI Discord for you guys. Um, they do have a specific channel just for the Cosm PY uh, library that they're building. Do you prefer any IDE and does it work well with VS Code? Um, it does, it should, it, by all, it should work with VS Code. Um, I have not used VS Code that much with Python. Um, um, I use it more with Go and, and TypeScript, but I prefer uh, JetBrains PY Charm. Um, just I prefer it because that's what I've been using all this time. I don't 
I don't necessarily know if, if, you know how much better it is than VS Code, but one nice thing about PyCharm versus using it with just like the standard Python um, idle is the like virtual environment that Python that the PyCharm will manage for you. So that's that's like not not having to worry about that uh, is awesome. I believe VS Code does the same thing. So I think I think it's um, I think it should work fine with VS Code. I just haven't I haven't tested it. Well, I think I think we're coming up on the end end of this talk, and I don't see anybody else typing. So I'll be I'll hang out in the um, one on one. If anybody has any more questions, please please feel feel to drop by and and let's have a chat.